Hi everyone, this is Shante, aka Shante Z. It is Tuesday, May 19th. I almost forgot what day it was today. And it's my analysis, so I'm just going to come with you with some things. Um, it's pretty kind of a jam-packed day. Tuesday's always like kind of like a jam-packed day for politics, but here we are, right? So, of course, it's always start with the coronavirus. The coronavirus is... Um, it's always going to be the first topic due to, you know, the climate or what's going on with this pandemic. So coronavirus is always the first thing to talk about. So here we are. So the federal response, we have 1.5 million cases, 92,000, almost 93 deaths. And um, of course, no mass testing. Um, what else? Uh Donald Trump's press conferences completely deranged from crazy. Yeah, crazy shit. So, um, he had a press conference, I believe, this morning at the White House, I think, um, in terms of cases. Hold on. It was so much he did. Oh, yeah. This morning's press conference. There we go. So Trump was asked about why he's promoting hydroxychloroquine because of his yesterday saying that he take he's been taking it for a whole week, which I'm like, how you take a hydroxychloroquine for a week? That's supposed to be for people that have lupus and, and that's battling malaria, but you would have had side effects because you're in a high risk age group. He's 73 years old and he's over 250 pounds. Like he's basically obese. Like how you taking hydroxychloroquine i have no idea so that being said and then he also claimed that he has worked with doctors um and proven that this drug um actually is it actually helps people to recover from coronavirus but we all know that's definitely not true because the studies prove that actually there was people from the hospitals that actually got sicker taking um hydroxychloroquine and some people actually died from taking hydroxychloroquine because it's actually not for people that's battling coronavirus it's for people that battles lupus that is diagnosed with lupus or had malaria right because it treats malaria and it treats people with lupus lupus is ongoing malaria is something that you can get rid of you can die from malaria but you can actually treat malaria with a hydroxychloroquine uh, he was also asked about the medicine has a great reputation for people that has lupus. And he said frontline workers are taking this medicine. And he said frontline workers um, will not show up to work without taking hydroxychloroquine, which we all know that is a complete bullface lie. So when a CNN reporter was asked about all these accusations, like where this is coming from, basically she was like, I don't know where he's getting this information from. She answered all, she said all the things that all the American people have said. Like, where is he getting this information from? Because it's proven to be a dangerous drug for people um, that's battling coronavirus, right? And um, then he also, then she says that this might, workers might be taking this thing, but doesn't mean that all workers want is, is taking this thing like it's not proven so once again like these are all the lies that come out of donald trump's month and then he had another press conference at the white house um his cabinet meeting and he basically said you know the numbers are going down again which you all know that's a lie he said numbers in texas florida and georgia are going down which actually the numbers in texas and florida is actually increasing because all those numbers are in the 30s they're not as high as New York numbers or New Jersey or California or Illinois or Massachusetts, but they're up there. Those numbers, they're like up in the 30s and 40s. I'm not sure about Florida's numbers because it's actually higher than Georgia's. I know Georgia's, the last time I checked, was in the 30s since their reopening. And other states are reopening tomorrow, which 17 states cases of coronavirus has increased as the trajectory in new york 
state has gone down. But I'm going to get into New York State in a minute because I'm going to cover a little bit of Andrew Cuomo's briefing. But, yeah, Trump lied. And then um, he's also saying Ben Carson is doing a good job when Ben Carson actually reversed a lot of the HUD policies under the last administration that actually helped people like me and you. Um, also, he keeps saying we have the best test in the world. How are we going to have the best test in the world when we're actually not testing not even 25% of the population? We're only testing about, um, what is it? 3% of the population here in the United States. That is not even enough. And that 3% is coming out of New York State. It's not coming out of uh, the United States entirely. So, whatever. Uh, and then saying vaccines are moving into phase one and phase two. We're on the way to head of the schedule. It will be distributed rapidly and military will do a vaccine. It's already been said by scientists that vaccines take 12 to 18 months. I don't understand. Like, I just don't understand. But I'm not going to get into the brain of Donald Trump. Um, and then... Um, He's cutting all these regulations. He was saying that, saying all other things when it's supposed to be pertaining to the coronavirus. And then, um, so he was asked questions. He was asked numerous questions, but there's questions that stuck out to me. And one of the questions is, Trump was asked about a plan to help 36.5 million people. It was a female reporter. She said, um, what is your plan? When are you going to announce your plan, excuse me, to help 36.5 million employers unemployed Americans back to work because you're overseeing a huge economic despair since the last century almost. And he was like, we have announced a plan. We are reopening states. That is such a nasty question. No, he said, you're such a rude person. And then she was trying to ask him a follow-up question and he skipped her over to the man. And that's what happened. So, a lot, like I said, 17 states have seen increases in their cases since their reopening. And that is including Georgia, that's including Florida, that's including Texas, that's including Maryland. And there's several other states, too, that see that saw um, increases in their cases, while big cities like New York City has seen a trajectory gone down. Even though we still got the most cases, but there's people that have resolved. We, didn't, we don't know the numbers of the people that resolved in New York State alone. Um, we only got from a few states that resolved from the coronavirus. All we know that there's children that also has been diagnosed to in 14 states. And um, <laughs> good night, Sheba. And that's just um, what it is. That's where we are. So there's, if you think kids don't get affected, kids get affected too. And from what I was told from other people that I know that some of their kids was in ICU and was luckily to get off because a lot of people that's on the ventilator in ICU do not come off. They don't. Um, <laughs> so that's just what it is with Trump and his responses. And then he was also asked about, you know, Nancy Pelosi. He said, I don't discuss Nancy Pelosi. I guess he feels upset because Nancy Pelosi kind of like stroke his ego about him taking hydroxychloroquine, like how he is morbidly obese. Because it's true. He is overweight. He's almost 300 pounds. He's six foot, but he's almost 300 pounds. And then on top of that, he's older. He's in his 70s. Like, he's at risk already in the at-risk age group of coronavirus. He doesn't even wear a mask. So right then and there, he's at risk. So why would you take something that will cause effects to your body? But then again, we don't believe it because Trump is lying. He just doing this so other people can take this drug and put their health at risk because that's what the strategy is and that's not a good strategy because there's people that actually take his words and because he does hold the highest office of the land people are taking his words seriously because they voted for him and they believe in him they believe that he will fix miracles there's people out there and i'm pretty sure there's people that follow me that do support him which i have no issue do your do your thing 
say no more. But you want to be careful of first injecting bleach in yourself, then taking a dangerous drug. Listening to the words, and I and I shouldn't say this, in my 34 years of life, and as in my childhood, I should say, I always took the president's word seriously, even presidents I did not care for. But the simple fact is now that you have someone in that same position who constantly puts out mistruths and falsehoods and conspiracy theories and saying this will heal you, this will cure you. And now you, the same person that tells you to inject bleach and other disinfectants in your body and now to take in hydroxychloroquine, it's like, why hold this man's word seriously? And it's so sad because he is the leader of the free world and we live in the free world. So think about that. Let that sink in. Next on my topics, Lord have mercy. Um, Cuomo's briefing uh, basically summed up some things about, um, ooh, let's see. Yep, yeah, there we go. So Cuomo's briefing is mostly talked about um, the curve is flattening because the curve is the number of hospitalizations are gone down. But however, it's still a staggering number. We're still like not out the woods yet. But um, ambulance services on Long Island and elective surgeries are resuming. We don't know the case in New York City yet because due to the fact that we may not reopen. I don't know if we're going to reopen on the 28th if we don't meet the three metrics of the seven metrics. Which I'm cool with because I want to be safe going to work. I want to be safe to get on the train. I just want to be safe going outside my house. And until then, I don't mind staying home or even working from home. I don't mind. Literally. Um, while taking the steps with reopening um, with very few crowds, he wants to have a few crowds of 10. I think, honestly, I think we should have no gatherings at all because there's no vaccine. And we don't know how people are still getting sick from coronavirus. We don't even know the amount of people that recovered from coronavirus in New York City. No, excuse me, in New York State alone. We know the number in the United States, 350,000 some odd people and counting. But we don't know the physical number in each state of how many people have resolved. So that's why like, I'm very leery about gathering. I don't even see my family because I want to make sure to keep them safe. Catch my drift? So, yep. He also stated about Memorial Day um, that there will be the annual, the traditions will be televised and vehicle parades are acceptable. Vehicle parades are okay as long as the cars are distant from each other. That's just my opinion. But, call me crazy, but and um what else about um uh, oh yeah the america first law is basically corporations right so we still need federal funding so we have the most corporations in new york and i'm pretty sure the republicans are going to bail them out because they have stake and interest you know they fund their political campaigns their political career and da 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 he wants corporations that take money from government, this is Cuomo, to rehire the people that they had to furlough. Honestly, to tell you the truth, I don't think that's going to happen because of what happened in 2008, how AIG laid off so many people, and then when they got the bailout money, they pay themselves with that money. I remember that because I was trying to get a job at AIG, and... The way that they paid themselves was, it was despicable. And there's people that were VPs that were laid off and executive direct were laid off. And the fact that these higher ups paid themselves was horrible. It was horrible. And so Governor Cuomo was AG at that time. He did, you know, sue them. But still, like, I don't trust that. So, 
I just want him just to fight harder. I, I really don't want these corporations, that's the progressive thing, don't want these corporations to take any money from the government. Anything, money from the government should go to the average American worker because they have families and bills and rent or mortgages to pay. That's who it should go to. Not corporations. It should go to small businesses. Because they are the brink. They, they make up our economy too. With co consumer spending. Because consumer spending makes. We are a consumer spending actually. A consumer spending economy. So without consumer spending. The economy will tank. Banks don't keep it alive. They keep it at a float. But they don't keep it alive like consumer spending. That's our spending. So think about that. Um, you can catch more of Como's briefing on YouTube or Facebook Watch, whatever you got. Okay? So, yeah. Um, so the Ahmad Arbery and Breonna Taylor case. Breonna Taylor's boyfriend was released. That's furthest that I got. I didn't get the chance to read up more on it, but I probably will provide a little bit more details tomorrow on their cases. All I know is please watch their cases and because these things here for them to be murdered the way they were murdered was senseless and it shows that it feels like our our we don't matter and black people matter all people matter and killing people of color because you feel like they fit this description it shows how racist these people is it, still living to this day. And racism has been before here before the current resident of the White House is just more emboldened. And people feel like they can get away with things. And we live in a 21st century. You're not going to get away with just killing a black person just because. Hell no. That's why it's called the First Amendment, free speech. March up and down that street that they got to. Physically distance. That's right. Raise awareness. That's right. But I'll bring a little bit more on that case. These cases probably tomorrow or Thursday. Um, politics. So, oh, Mitch McConnell. Moscow Mitch. Hashtag. And the Republican Senate. Wants to subpoena Obama administration officials for a letter that was declassified by the Republicans that Susan Collins emailed to herself about Michael Flynn. Michael Flynn was the successor and success who succeeded, excuse me, Susan Rice's job as the national security advisor and she was that email was concerning her was was concerning excuse me mike to give mike flynn sensitive classified information with russia because he was talking to the ambassador of russia they had like a quote unquote networking working relationship like a compromise relationship so basically it's like I do this for that it's almost like a quid pro quo in, in in my book um because President Obama imposed sanctions eco economic sanctions on Russia because of their interference with the 2016 presidential elections like any other president you interfere in my elections I'm gonna impose goddamn sanctions on you and then Days before leaving office, he kicked all Russian companies out within, a, you had three days to leave. And that's what it was. And I guess, and he also was warned, Donald Trump was warned not to hire Mike Flynn because of his complicated relationship and because of all other things that he had done. Because he was an Obama official, administration official, and he was fired. So now the fact that he was chosen as the national security advisor, it was just, it was something fishy. But he was, 
he was flagged by um, Sally Yates, who said he might be compromised, he might be blackmailed, which is, they had, had it coming, because he pled guilty months later in court. Maybe, no, excuse me, like a year or two late in court. So now they're trying to overturn that case and try to pardon Mike Flynn. I'm like, no, he was responsible for the the collusion in the Mueller report, along with Paul Manafort and George Mustafa, all of them. So my thing is like, why? It, this is all a distraction. This is all a distraction. This is what the supposed to be the Obama Gate thing is. It's a distraction, a complete distraction from the fact that almost 93,000 people are dead from coronavirus. You have 1.5 million cases of coronavirus in the United States, the most in on the entire globe on the planet. And so now he's trying to deflect. I want people to not pay attention to this crap because this is why he got in. He deflected. And of course, there was a lot of lies about Hillary Clinton and a lot of this and a lot of that. And now that we got the most corrupt administration in the White House, people, I need people to pay attention. Listen, Donald Trump is trying to deflect and distract from the truth of his own mess ups with why are we are quarantined at home. I'm a need for people to pay attention. Do not give in to his bull crap. Worry about voting him out. That's all I got to say on that. And instead of them not focusing on the HEROES Act to pass it because it passed in the House, you're going to worry about subpoenaing Obama officials when people, 30, almost 40 million people are unemployed. Some of them don't have, can't get unemployment. Cases are rising in 17 states. And you talking about subpoenaing Obama officials? This party got all their priorities jacked up. Severely. This is why every time since modern day history, why Republicans should not govern the whole entire country. This is one of the reasons that proved my point since I was a kid. And it also started with in my teenage years and to my coll collegiate years of why Republican administrations don't work for the average person. I was researching conservatism. I'm going to continue to research it during my time while I'm quarantined while applying for jobs. Because I want to know how this is all jacked up. That's what I'm saying. Study your stuff before talking about it. Um, I was going to discuss presidential politics tonight, but I feel like there's not too much in the part presidential politics on a simple fact is, um, Trump still can't get past his pettiness of the Obamas, which of course, I mean, like it's, 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 it's just a bit much, but all I know is let's not pay attention to Trump's distraction. Let's Pay attention to what's going on with the coronavirus, how we can protect ourselves, how we can stay sanitized, how we can keep our masks on, keep social distance from one another. Uh, we're not going to be out the woods on this. Cases are rising as places are reopening. People are not following the data. People are just going outside without their masks, which we're not out of the woods yet because it's supposed to be a second wave of this thing. There's no vaccine. There's no other additional treatments. Is the, the only treatment is staying the hell away from each other. And that's all I got to say. So with that being said, I'm about to end this live broadcast. But let me just say this. Do not gather. Don't go to no one's house. Stay away from people. Go out if you got to go to get essentials. 
such as food, such as medicine, or cleaning supplies. Do not go to no one's house. I keep seeing that crap on my timeline, and I get so irritated because it's like, you are spreading it. You are spreading the coronavirus. That's exactly what you're doing. Stop gathering. As much as people want to visit people and hang out with people, I'm trying to keep people alive in this world. And I want to keep my loved ones alive. That's why I haven't gone near my parents since the beginning of March. And you know what? I'm keeping them alive. I'm keeping my sisters alive. My brother-in-law alive. My friends alive. My church family alive. We got to do everything remotely. It's just the way life is now. But listen. Just be patient. Hold on. Let God handle this. Do something to make yourself happy. Clean your house. Color in a coloring book, if you have a coloring book. If not, they got some in the pharmacy or in the supermarket. You know, learn how to cook certain things like I did. Or clean your house if you didn't clean it. Strain out your stuff. Start giving stuff away. Do something counterproductive to keep your mind off the coronavirus. But also, if you got to go outside, wear your mask and wear your gloves and stop gathering. All right? Be safe, everyone.